Welcome to Rock Solid Productions, where in this video we're going to show you how to clean old games, especially those that you find at thrift stores, rummage sales, Facebook, and eBay. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rockstyle Productions, and recently I picked up quite a few NES games to add to my collection. And while some of them look really good, like this copy of Tetris and Super Mario Bros. 2, label's a little crunchy on that side, but not terrible. Disney's Adventures in the Magic Kingdom, these all look really good. However, we have other games like Trade West John Elway Quarterback, where it looks like someone gave John Elway a black tooth. Home Alone 2, where the front looks okay and the back, yeah, not so good. Even the, you know, good old-fashioned Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. The cartridges, the outsides, they don't look great. What's even worse is what could be on the inside. So I've got some tips and tricks here that will help you make sure that when you put these games in your system, regardless of if you're using an original NES, a Super NES, a Genesis, or any clone system, that you get a great performance right out of the box and you don't contaminate your existing home console. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help show you how to do things like get the labels off, get the, uh, you know, poor John Elway, he's a Hall of Famer, you shouldn't black tooth them like this. So what we're gonna do is we've got some tools and tips and tricks of the trade that I'm gonna share with you right now. Now you are gonna need a few supplies. For things like the decals, you may want to get a uh, either a spudger or a razor blade knife. You're definitely gonna to wanna to have either a heat gun or a hair dryer. Now be careful on something like that. You don't want it to get too hot because you can actually melt and warp the plastic on the cases of the games that we're dealing with. You'll also wanna pick up some kind of a cleaner for your cartridges themselves. Uh, these are the one-up cards that you can get through like castlemaniagames.com. They sell them in three packs. They sell them in packs to clean the systems itself. Uh, they even have a pack that includes the cleaners and the cleaning solution as well. Now, uh, some people do like using Q-tips. I've used them myself. What I don't like about using Q-tips on the contacts here themselves is the fact that they can actually live, leave lint and fuzzies behind. You don't want, you're trying to clean it, not recontaminate it. And then finally, you're gonna want some cleaning solutions. A lot of people use alcohol. I can't say not to use it, it does work well. The higher the percent, the better, because you have less water content in there. I actually use this here. This is called Magnum Force 2. It's from a company called Dynamite. It's actually one of the brands that for the company that I work for, Horizon Hobby. They have not endorsed, they're not sponsoring this content whatsoever. This is just honestly what I use. It's a cleaner degreaser designed for RC models. It works great on ball bearings, electric motors, and electric contacts. That's where this comes in handy. And finally, Goo Gone. Uh, this stuff is great, especially for like the labels on cartridges and such. Now, before you do any of these tips and tricks, make sure that you are in a clean, well-lit, well-ventilated area. If you have a window near you, open it up because some of these solvents, you know, Goo Gone, it has that fake orange smell. You can get kind of sick if you're kind of around these odors a little bit too much. Same with the Magnum Force 2 as well. Um, it, with the solvent and the propellant that it uses in there, you can get sick if you're doing it in a enclosed environment. Finally, any of these solvents that you're going to use, you don't want to do it on like a hardwood surface like this because they can actually cause damage to the finish. So kids, don't do this on your mom's kitchen table. She's gonna kill you. Get yourself a rag or a mat or something like that to lay down. Um, you know, chamois work pretty well. A piece of cardboard, anything that any solvent that would drip onto would not drip and soak into the surface down below. So with all that being said, let's get started. Now there is one final thing that I did forget to mention, and that's to want to make sure that you have some paper towels as well. It'll just make life a heck of a lot easier. 
Now looking at Super Mario Brothers 2, I didn't notice initially, but it actually has like some gray streaks here and everything. But other than that, the cartridge looks good. So if I don't care about that, I can just throw it in the system, right? Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Before I put any game into my system, I'm going to clean it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Magnum Force and just spray down the Q-tips here. And what I do, I like using two, because then what I do is I put one in the top, one in the bottom, and then I twist them to kind of apply pressure. Start scrubbing away. So now this was something that looked great, right? Look at all that black crap that just came off. That's terrible. Now, in addition to that, let me actually grab my 1UP card here. And the 1UP card actually has a fluid side and a dry side. And what I like doing with this is I'll actually spray the cartridge itself. And this will evaporate on its own. And then start cleaning. It doesn't look as bad that time, but you can see that it did have some black on there. Flip it around to the dry side. Okay, and now that I can set aside and let dry if I wanted to. But let's take a look at that kind of squiggly mark there. Once again, I'm going to take my Magnum Force 2, spray a little bit first of all on a paper towel, and I'm just going to let it sit. And what that's going to do is that's going to start breaking down any kind of ink or anything that was in here. After just a few seconds, there you can kind of see how some of it's already coming off. Now, I like using this instead of, and there you can see some more came off, instead of Goo Gone because it doesn't tend to attack uh, other adhesive and, and things as much, so I can use it closer to the label and not risk damaging it. There you can see exactly how much came off. So I'll do a little bit more work on that one, but let's move on to John Elway's football. Poor John Elway. Now this one, again, I'm going to do... Just a little bit of Magnum Force 2 on my paper towel here. And let's see if we can't fix John's tooth. Almost, just got a little bit more of a cavity. And there you can see John Elway's beautiful smile has been restored and it has not damaged the label. Again, I want to clean without damaging. Now, uh, this here I'm going to try to to peel it up, but that's a pretty stuck on label. So what I may want to do, grab a, you know, ideally I'd have an X-Acto knife, but just grab my box cutter here and just try to get under an edge to peel it up. And it kind of sort of works. Just be very careful when you're doing this. I am actually doing this wrong. You should never cut towards yourself. Especially, you can kind of see this is an old and dull blade. If I was doing this, uh, if I was really doing this the right way, I would have a fresh, clean blade for this. But you can see how I've kind of been able to get that off. Now, again, two options I have. I can spray this down with Magnum Force 2. Let it soak for a few moments. And all that this is doing is it's breaking down the adhesive here under the label. I'm going to take my thumbnail, and there you can see how easily that's just rolling off now. A lot of these, there, it just pulled right off. You know, these glues and whatnot have been on since, you know, the late 80s, early 90s, quite possibly. Grab another piece of paper towel and just... Try to finish that off there. Now, I've still got some adhesive on there, so this is where the Goo Gone comes in. And there's two ways you can apply the Goo Gone. You can either do it where you pour a little bit on the item itself and let it sit and soak in. I don't like that because it can kind of run everywhere and create a bigger mess. What I'm going to do is I've got another piece of paper towel here. I'm just going to dab the top of my Goo Gone kind of spread it over an area that would be about the same size that I'm looking to treat. 
I'm going to take it and I'm just going to sit it on here and I'm going to apply some pressure down. Again, all that this is doing is breaking down uh, the, the glue and the adhesive that's on here. After about 15, 20 seconds, look at that, it's all gone. Now, label on label is going to be especially tough. This is where I would recommend getting a heat gun or a hair dryer to try to pull that off because uh, the goo gun may actually attack the label underneath. Although, hey, hey, look at this. Bam, came off super easy and in one piece. And I'm gonna take just another piece of paper towel, a little bit of Magnum Force, Wipe that off. One final thing I need to do before I would put this into my system, and that would be again, grab my one-up card. Make sure that you get that nice and soaked. You may have to treat your cartridge more than once, depending on how filthy and dirty it is. That's actually pulling off a lot of gunk there. Now, one of the reasons why I don't necessarily always apply the cleaner to this is because this can actually attack the glue that holds the pad on there. So, I'm just kind of get that all bit wet there. And kind of coming up already from the corner but that's why I don't directly spray on the one-up card itself if it does come off what you can do is you can just use a little bit of um, shoe goo to reattach it or there you can see what's coming off of there or even some super glue there's that turn it around we'll dry it off And actually there you can see that one came right off. That is why I do not spray the, the cleaning spray onto here because it will undo the adhesive that keeps the pad on the card. So with John Elway's quarterback club pretty well cleaned up, we've got to wipe it down just a little bit yet here. And with uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 cleaned up, we're gonna to toss it in our NES, see how they play. So there you go, that's how I clean new games that I pick up, regardless of where I get them from. The 1UP cards, my local stores carry these as well, Live Action Games has them. You can also get them from Ryan at CastlemaniaGames.com too. That's actually where I got my three pack here. Super Mario 2, John Elway Football, neither of which played before, now both play perfectly. Now, both of them I did have to do a couple different cleaning sessions with, and John Elway, you saw the condition of the label. I have a few other games here that I have to go through and clean, like I've got Tecmo Star Force, and a lot of these games have these labels here, and they're really easy to get off. That Home Alone game with the Blockbuster label on the back, right here, this one is going to take a heck of a lot of work. Now stay tuned too, because uh, in a future episode, one of the things we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to replace the batteries in NES and Super NES cartridges too. Uh, that is something that you will want to make sure and stay subscribed to the channel. That way anytime we do come out with new content, you are kept alert and up to date. Just hit that subscribe button and if you hit the bell notification as well, you'll be notified every time we do upload new stuff too. I greatly appreciate it too. Let me know what you think of the tips and tricks that I gave you here. If you've used the 1UP cards or even something else and what is working for you. Let me know down in the comment section below. You can also email me with any questions that you have too at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. I'll have links to the 1UP cards on castlemaniagames.com and I'll also have a link to Magnum Force to on horizonhobby.com. You can also get Magnum Force 2 at your local participating Horizon Hobby dealer and retailer too. Now with the 1UP cards through Castlemania Games, one of the cool things is if you use promo code ROX10, you can actually save 10% off on the 1UP cards. You can get the full cleaning kit, you can get the kit that includes the cards, they've got the cartridges for the NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis. They've got a lot of really cool things 
from one up that you want to uh, check out. Uh, another thing that you want to do too, if you do have any questions, you want to know more, if you have any issues, stuff too, hit me up on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. You can also continue the conversation with me over on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Rock Solid Productions. I would love to hear from each and every one of you. Finally, if you want to help support the future of Rock Solid Productions and get early access to all of our videos, make sure that you go ahead and visit our Patreon page, patreon.com slash rocksod. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get early access to all of our videos up to two days in advance from normal subscribers. And for subscribers of $25 and up, we're going to hook you up with a Rock Solid Productions t-shirt. So, hope you found these tips and tricks on how to clean old retro games and make sure that you don't, you know, a dirty game can make a clean system dirty. You want to make sure that your systems last as long as possible, and clean games is the easiest way to do it. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.